Number one. This happened to me last Friday. I'm currently in my senior year of college. I have some pretty good GRE scores, but I want to really make a stellar statement of purpose before applying to my dream school. Carnegie Mellon for an MS in computational biology. Fingers crossed guys, as both my younger sisters and I are currently home from school on winter break and she may possibly be the loudest person to ever exist. I typically barricade myself away in a library with a large Duncan. This is needed. My strong suit lies in mathematics and not writing, so I need all the brain power I can get. You might be saying, what is she doing on Reddit? Write your essay, bitch. But I need a break or I'll go crazy, guys. I get to the library and head to my normal spot which nobody seems to know about. Second floor, tucked in the corner. Good Wi-Fi, near a cozy heater. No windows to distract me with an enticing view. Except, there's someone sitting at my table. I mutter a sorry and turn to walk away. The man stops me, claiming I can share his table. There didn't seem to be a lot of open spots downstairs, so I accepted. About 30 minutes of silence later, he asks what I'm so intently working on. I explain. He chuckles and says, A girl with a brain. You shouldn't be wasting all your time at school, though. You're too pretty. Which, ew. I don't really feel like debating this, so I just awkwardly laugh. He goes on to explain how if he had a woman who was so smart, he would never let her leave the house for fear she might discover something better. I ignore this. He then says something really weird. Has anyone ever told you you look like Dag? Huh? What do you mean? I ask. The Dag, from Mad Max. It takes me a few seconds to process this. I have honestly had a couple of friends text me after seeing the movie and tell me they see some resemblance but I'm not going to participate in this conversation. No. Short, blunt, and to the point. We continue on in silence. At this point, I've talked the afternoon as a loss. My concentration is shot to shit, and I won't be able to focus anymore with this creep here. I fake a phone call, because society tells me to be polite, and I still have trouble doing so. Huh. How funny. My mom needs me to come home in the middle of the day. I gather my stuff and nod to the man, walk to the car, and curse when I realize I left my flash drive on the table. Worried the guy might have taken it, I rush back, and the flash drive is there, but he's gone. Weird. Well, if he's gone and my table is open, I guess I'll stay. Five minutes later, I'm all but engrossed back in my work. Here's something important. Not being able to find any hair ties. Seriously, where do they go? I simply stuck my hair up on my head with a big old claw clip. So there's me, typing on my laptop when I suddenly feel my hair tumble down my head and a hand squeeze it. I turn around to see the man who doesn't let go of my hair. I could start a set with you, he mutters, a sickening grin on his face. Friends, if you need to scream bloody murder and want to make sure you're heard, a library is a good place to do it. I didn't think, just screamed. About ten patrons and a librarian came running up. I instantly started crying, only to have the man say, My girlfriend and I got in a fight. The security guard separated us, and upon hearing my side of the story, the man was kicked out of the library. The guard took me to my car, still really freaked out about this one, but I'll get over it. As a dag would say, 
He was a total scranger. Number two. When I was 16 years old, it was a very low point in my life. I ended up getting hospitalized for four months over the summer. The doctors were afraid that my heart would give out if I even did so much as walk. So if I wanted to go anywhere, I had to call a nurse to take me in a wheelchair. My mum and dad visited me every day. Not always together. Whenever my mum came alone, she would take me out in a wheelchair to the beach access behind the hospital so I could get some fresh air and look at the lake. One day, my mum had come by to visit and she took me out to the beach as usual. While we were waiting for the elevator down from the ward, a man stopped, my mum and me. Your daughter has such beautiful black hair. The way he said it, Give me the willies. Kind of in a Buffalo Bill-esque, I want to wear it, way. My mum thanked him and chatted a bit. But I just looked the other way and ignored him. I could feel his eyes on me though. We all piled into the elevator and as soon as the doors closed, I feel something tugging at my hair. I glance over and realise that the guy is playing with my hair. I'm pretty creeped out here but I don't want to cause a scene just in case he has a mental disorder and can't help himself. So I just leaned over as far as I could in the wheelchair so that he couldn't reach me without alerting my mum. Anyway, we reach the bottom, get off, and my mum and I start wheeling over to the beach while the guy just stands by the elevator and watches us go. I told my mum what he did and she said she'd make sure to do something if we ever saw him again. After that, we kept seeing him, always by the elevator. He'd make a comment about how beautiful my hair is. My mum would nod politely. We'd go in the elevator and he'd try to play with my hair, but my mum would move in the way. We'd get off and he'd watch us roll out. Creepy. But we decided he was harmless. Until, about a month later, we went down to the beach as usual, and this time, we didn't see him at the elevator, but we didn't think much of it. At some point, my mum had to use the restroom, and it was mutually decided I was old enough to take care of myself for three minutes. I was sitting in the wheelchair, looking out at the lake and enjoying the sun, when I started getting pushed, thinking it was my mum. I turned around to ask for five more minutes. Nope, not my mum. Nope. It's the fucking guy. He's pushing me towards the bushes, and the look on his face is predatory. I scream, but the only other people out there are in a canoe out in the water. So I make a decision. I decide, if I'm going to die, I'd rather it be heart failure than this dude. So I get up out of the wheelchair and start legging it towards the restrooms. I look behind me to see if he's following. Unfortunately, he's not. He's just standing by the wheelchair looking shocked. I guess he thought I was paralysed. I make it back to my mum, who ran out of the toilet upon hearing me scream. We both look back and the guy is running away, like he's got a rocket in his ass. My mum carried me on her back to the wheelchair. Then we rushed to inform the hospital staff. They put a watch out, and for the next month, there's security hanging around the elevator on my floor. But he never came back. So creep, who preys on sick and disabled. Go fuck yourself, and hope no one ever sees you again. Number three. First time poster. Not really a long time viewer, but you get the drill. I never told this story to anyone except my brother, but I guess the whole event has blown over by now. Back in 2009, I lived in the greater Cleveland, Ohio area. I was really into this card game called Yu-Gi-Oh! 
which was also an anime TV show. It's your standard fighting slash deck building card game, but that's besides the point. I used to go to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments with my older brother and my local game shop, and there was a fair share of odd people. Most of the people who went weekly had nicknames, because that's what it was like on the TV show. My brother got the nickname Igloo, because he played a penguin deck and he was super pale. I always wanted a nickname. One time, I went to the tournament without my brother. I played this guy whose nickname was the Mermaid. The Mermaid was relatively short, heavy set, and usually very quiet. From the moment we started the first game, I knew he was strange. He kept telling me how good I was at the game, how he liked my dice set, just generally weird, things unrelated to the game. I lost the first game, and he was pretty pleased with himself for beating a 13 year old, but I wasn't going to whine about it. The second game I absolutely crushed him, and he seemed pretty pissed. Right before we started the third game, things got uncomfortable. How about we make a wager or something? He talked very quietly as he held my hand in a very tight grip. You mean for cards? I replied, breaking free from his hand. If I win, I'll drive you home, he spoke softly. And if you win, I'll buy you a booster pack. I wasn't a stupid kid. There was no way I was going to get into a stranger's car. Before I could say anything, the owner of the store came over to our game and asked him what he was doing. The mermaid went silent. The owner whispered in my ear, If he gives you any more trouble, come to me and I'll kick him out for good. I won the third game, thus kicking him out of the tournament. He left right after the game. After he was gone, I asked the owner why he was called the mermaid. Oh, him? His first name is Ariel, like in The Little Mermaid. It started as a joke, and it just sort of turned into his name. I thought nothing of it until May of 2013, when three girls escaped the house of a Cleveland man who had been keeping them in captivity for years. His name was Ariel Castro, and I could have been the next. Hey guys, big shout out and thank you to Bella for the collaboration. You guys should check out her channel. Her channel will be in the description below, so go ahead and click over and give her a subscribe.